In this video, we'll look at how you can use the .NET command line interface to build, test, and publish .NET projects. We will look in detail each and every command to understand the <coughs> mandatory and optional fields and op parameters that you can pass while building uh, or, or testing the .NET based projects. Since this is more a practical session, you will be able to follow the commands uh, while you are going through the video, thereby trying out in your projects and understanding the commands better. So let's get started with the first command, which is the build command. As I said, uh, the build command uh, will help you to build uh, uh, the dotnet based apps whether it's web mobile or uh, other type of application like console or library projects in one of the previous video we looked into uh, using the dotnet new command to uh, create projects uh, using the existing templates and, uh, and and also create a solution file to link the projects into a single group of solution if you're looking for a detailed video on that, uh, the link is, is on the description of this video. So uh, now what we will do is we will go ahead and uh, understand these commands for these sample projects, wherein I have an AP project, a library project, and a test project with, with one sample test case. So uh, as in any other command, in order to get the help uh, related to the build command, you say .NET build hyphen H, which stands for help, and you will you will get all the parameters that you can use and while building the code. So yeah, the basic command would look simple .NET build, and you need not even specify any project files solution file. What the .NET build command would do is it would go ahead and search for solution file in the current folder and go ahead and build if it finds one solution or the CS process file. So uh, if I just say .NET build, it would go ahead and uh, build the, the current folder where I'm in, the academy.aps folder, which has a solution file. Now, as, as a option, I can also specify the academy, the solution file. I can specify the solution file or I can also specify the individual project files which I want to uh, build. Let's say the solution file will build all the projects. Now, when you give the individual so CS projects, it would only build the relevant solution file or the project file. So now along with this, you can also specify hyphen C, which stands for, or you can say configuration. This is either you, know, you generally have debug and release or any other particular versions uh, or the configurations you have. Uh, in this case, I will go ahead and just say debug. And then you can, uh, now if I just do a build, it would go ahead and build all the projects. And uh, uh, first it would restore the, the new get packages and go ahead and build uh, the APIs first, libraries, and then the test projects. So it says successful. Now if I go into bin, and go to debug, I will see the relevant files and relevant uh, output folders. Now, as, as an additionally, I can also specify what is the version of, what is the version suffix of my package or library. So to, before we run the command, let me go back to the output files, which is in this case, a DLL or an application. And if I go and go ahead and search for properties, and look into the version details, which says the product version is one and the file version is, is 1.0. So generally, uh, if you want to specify whether this release is alpha, beta, or your own version, that, that will help you identify uh, uh, the, the kind of version it is. Example, you may even hyphenate with a branch name of this build so that you know which branch is deployed or which version is deployed. So in order to, in order to specify the, the details of what suffix you need, you can specify version hyphen suffix and then specify the, the suffix that you want to have in the version. 
in it it could be as i said could your brand's name beta or any other uh, identifier that you want to use so now once i build it would still generate the same files same set of uh, output files but now if i go into the properties and then go ahead into details now you could see there is a hyphen beta added to the product version so this way it will help me to identify what is the version installed or which branch is it installed and various other parameters so this is a very basic uh, or the, the basic configuration and and the details you can use while you are uh, uh, building now the one last command that i would uh, uh, show you would be the going back to the help help so here there is something called self contained right which means that if you want to generate a dll which or output file which is which doesn't need uh, the dot net code to be installed a particular version self contained is it would also publish the output dls and the files along with the dot net runtime so that you could just go ahead and deploy in any environment and it would work with no prerequisite issues so the the way you need to do there is you know, a version suffix beta and then i'll specify se sc which means that you know self contained and then i can specify the the uh, identifier of the of the dot net framework i want to use so the information of the catalog that you can get it here uh, if you want to if if you want to if you're trying to build a, the output for a windows for each of these systems you have the identifier so i can specify win win hyphen for next 64 which means that it will generate the self contained image uh, or the output files along with okay so that now here what it says is you know you cannot specify this switch for a solution file and and you know it would it cannot apply for all the processing solutions so instead of sp specifying the solution file i'll say add this into academy.apis dot cs proj so now what it means I'm, I'm basically building the api project with my suffix so that it would go ahead and uh, so when you're specifying self-contained you will also have to specify the runtime that you want to use because you want to specify what is the runtime to use. So that's where you know, I say hyphen R and then I will say win64 hyphen hyphen R win x64. What it does is it would basically go ahead and build the project and, and generate the output file based on it will generate the file along with the self-contained image. What, what this you can now will be able to deploy into any Windows 64 and go ahead and deploy. Now let's look at the test command, which is used generally used to run the unit test cases in your project. So again, uh, uh, to get the help command or what are the commands I can use, I can say .NET test hyphen H, which will list on all the possible. Again, it will have, basically it will have all the parameters that we can pass to the build along with you know the the parameters specific to test cases wherein you can whether you want to collect the unit test unit test coverage report or do you want to filter out or uh, for a particular set of test cases for a type of test case you can specify all these details so again in order to run test uh, you could you could just say dot net test and it will go ahead and identify all the projects with uh, uh, the test projects and then it would run the test cases or alternatively you could again specify uh, let it complete so now it has found one test project with one test case it is able to generate the test case so now it's similarly i can say uh, instead of instead of giving leaving it for the command to it find out i can say Right, dot cs proj and then i can specify configuration which is let's say i want to run it in release mode and then it would go ahead and uh, generate 
the test cases and the report uh, build and generate test cases for the release mode now if you see there is a release where are my test cases right so similarly uh, now generally when we write the test cases they, we also specify uh, categorize the test cases as let's say regression test cases or unit test cases so we'll have various category of test cases and or the priority of the test case and everything so you know, using the dotnet test command you will be able to even filter out uh, or identify run only set of test cases based on your filter so for that you know you you can just we, we can just say dotnet test again the same command which i ran last time and then specify the filter uh, switch right which would and then specify various what are the parameters you want to run with example say when i say priority one it will it will find out it will it will search for all the test cases way which is marked with priority one and then go ahead and run the test cases for that particular for that particular syntax so now it will go ahead and build and find the test case with priority one if it finds it will go ahead and execute since since i have not marked my test case with, with any priority it, it was not able to find any test case and it fails but this is the command you know the filter can be used for filtering by priority filtering by category or uh, based on the class name the assembly name so you can specify various parameters to run the test cases for your need uh, regarding the code coverage uh, I'll, I'll publish a separate video altogether just focusing on code coverage as it's it's a very detailed topic that we need to focus and uh, complete uh -huh.